Hello, my fellow investors, and welcome back to another fundamental analysis video. Guys, I have had a week and a half. Um, if you guys don't know, basically, the child that my wife had, um, she had. Yeah, my child was essentially born, unfortunately, 25 weeks old uh, when he was born, and he's in the NICU, and honestly, it's just all over the place. It really, really is. We are just it's it's been absolutely crazy in fact it's been so crazy that um i completely forgot that today was sunday and uh, i have to make a video for today for monday so uh, i'm recording this at 11 09 p.m joy so yeah it's i've been um i have been that kind of just messed up with this whole entire situation that I've currently been having in my life but nonetheless though i figured you know what let's take a look at a company here I specifically want to take a look at company chipotle because chipotle well i kind of just saw this one um when i was looking at the finviz map for the weekend deep dive and i'm like this was massively down like five percent down on the week why i want to see if maybe it's a when is the good time to buy this thing, right? So we're gonna take a look at this company. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, really does help with the algorithm on YouTube as well as for more. Make sure to follow us on next time for investing. If you like, join us underscore the link is in the description below. So with that said, let's get started with this analysis. All right, everybody. So let's get started with the graph because this thing has been an absolute tear. In fact, this thing as of, uh, I think as of recently, if I'm not mistaken, had a very, very chunky stock split. In fact, I think here it is. So we got 50 for one stock split as of last month. And I do believe this was for, uh, yeah, for July uh, 24th of 2024. You can see the fast casual pioneer saw its stock price rise to a wealth above $3,000, guys. And they did a 50 for one stock split, meaning essentially the stock price got slashed by 50. So 3,000 divided by 50, but all of the shares outstanding and all the fundamentals got multiplied by 50 as well. So there was no change when it came to the market cap. Now, now if we take a look at this, we can see that on the one year, this is a 40.53% year to date, 14.72. Now, if we take a look at this on the five day, down 5.03. In fact, this mainly happened right here on the 12th. And this is mainly due to the fact that the CEO guys is actually stepping down and going to Starbucks. I guess. Yeah. Starbucks CEO steps down, replaced by Chipotle's CEO, Brian Nichol, which is probably why the stock actually fell on the 12th slash the 13th, right? It's, it technically fell on the 13th because of all the uncertainties when it comes to this. However, we can see here that Pershing Square doesn't expect Chipotle to miss a step with CEO's departure. Yeah. Guys, if a company's relying on a CEO to that extent, um, there's a big, big problem, right? There's a big, big problem. So, I personally don't think anything's going to happen with this. Nonetheless, though, it still is a pretty big drop, as we guys can see. In fact, this still has not recovered to that point, around $56 on the 12th or so. As you can see right now, it is downwards of $52.42. Now, something to note here as well is that when it came to their earnings, they completely crushed it this last quarter. We can see here that on July 24th, EPS normalized actual came in at 34 cents, beat by two pennies. EPS gap actual 33 cents, beats by two cents, and the revenue of 2.97 billion beats by $32.59 million. Now, something to note though, is that the next one, 29 revisions, 29 to the downside so yeah they're expecting this to crash and burn again these earnings are going to be on october 24th they're expecting 25 cents for the eps normalized estimate 26 cents for the eps gap estimate and revenue of 2.81 billion dollars so let us now jump into the calculator we got the ticker for cmg market cap of 71.85 billion dollars a pe of 51.42 so it's very very high with a current share price of 52 dollars and 47 cents now they do not pay out a dividend which again uh it's kind of bad in the sense that because well we're not getting a cash back for it however again guys this thing had a massive massive rally on the one year 40.53 percent right on the five year it's even more 221 percent so you do not buy chipotle for a dividend because clearly they don't have any but it's mainly due to their massive share price appreciation and in fact if we take a look at these free cash flows you guys can see that the 10-year average it is 512.19 Compared to the last year's free cash flow, it is 1.2 billion. Yeah, 512 million to 1.2 billion. That's absolutely incredible. So let us now jump into the fundamentals. Starting, of course, with net income. 
10 years ago of 445.4 million to one year ago of 1.23 billion dollars increase of 176 percent we see here a big drop as of eight years ago i don't know that this is when they had the e coli thing that was a big deal to the point that south park made a made a joke about it right, about chipotle and um uh, crapping blood <laughs> that was a thing so yeah i don't necessarily know if this is when it happened but and you know what guys i have to just check this i just have to fact check this it actually happened in 2015 so that kind of does make sense this eight year ago drop does make sense right there seeing that this was around the 2015 2016 era so yeah that does make sense but you can see after that it has just been oof, rest right to the right it has just been to the moon after that. So that's what I'm going to give it an 85%. Looking now into the free castle, we see something very, very similar. You can see here that it went from 429.5 million to one year ago of 1.22 billion, increase of 185%, with an average of $512.19 million. Again, drop here eight years ago. Had another drop four years ago as well, but I could just attribute that to COVID. So I look at this, I'm like, you know what? I think it's perfectly fine. I'm going to give this a 75%. Now, I could give it higher, but my main issue as to why not giving it higher is because it really is all over the place, right? It really is just all over the place. So I'm a little bit hesitant. Yeah, 75%, still a passing grade. Looking now at the revenue. The revenue does look very, very good. We got 10 years ago of $4.11 billion to one year ago of $9.87 billion, increase of 140.3%. And, um, well, you can see here that the only time that they ever went down was during um, the E. coli thing back in 2015, 26, 2015 and 2016. Aside from that, it's just been continuously going up. This is an easy 90%. Looking now into the assets as a reference only, it is increasing. So as the liabilities, though, we see a massive jump right there as of five years ago. And then the assets minus liabilities, it's fairly increasing, right? You saw a little drop there and that continued to drop. But then after that, it's been increasing. Aversable assets of $4.84 billion, liabilities of $2.7 billion, difference of $2.14 billion. I'm going to give this guy an 85%. You guys can see right there. Now, I got some minus the liabilities. Uh, this was good. Up until five years ago where it just crashed right now they are taking on a lot more liabilities then or as of then uh probably covid related as well right but all in all not necessarily liking this as of one year ago it is negative 3.76 billion and uh the average is negative 2 billion i'm gonna give this guys i'm sorry a 20 percent. i do not like this one bit now what i do like is these shares outstanding this looks amazing we got we can see here 10 years ago of 1.55 billion shares again this is after the stock split okay 1.55 billion shares to today of 1.37 billion shares a buyback of 11.6 percent guys not only that it's not consistently increasing sure i understand that but the issue when they have to issue and they buy back when they buy back. And even though that issuing isn't even a lot either. You guys can see here that they issued um, during COVID. You guys can see five to four. They did increase it. Then they increased it again from four to three. But honestly, it's not even that much. Uh, they basically increased it by like four million shares from four to three. All in all, guys, this is an easy 100%. Now, lastly, cash equivalents, they currently hold $806.5 million with an average of $440.46 million. And when looking at the overall grade, it's 79%. Honestly, it would be a lot higher if it wasn't for the cash on mass liabilities. You could easily say that that's like a 50, right? So that would essentially make this an 80 plus percent company. It's a really good company, guys, right? It really, really is a good, solid company. 79%, 80% basically. So yeah. But now the main issue is, is this a good buy, right? Because we saw the price before. It was like $3,000. Insane. Stock split doesn't really change the company though doesn't really change the value of the company because the market cap stays the same so let's take a look at the discounted free cash and see if after this five percent drop is still a buy and yes it is adjusted for that stock split okay so looking at the discounted free cash flow now <laughs> guys not inputting anything we got 23 dollars on the dot and then adjusting for debt 21 dollars and 55 cents let's input some numbers here so for the revenue growth assumption, you can see that in the past 10 years, they have done on average every single year around 10.86%. I actually like this number because we saw the graphs and it's very consistent. So I'm going to easily say 9% uh, for the lowest, 10% for the median, and 11% for the highest, guys. I think that's fair. I think that's very, very fair. Maybe put it at around like 
8, 10, 12, that could also work as well. But I like 9, 10, and 11. Now, when it comes to the projected share buyback, you guys can see in the past 10 years, they have bought back at around 1.34%. Very, very easy. One more time. Zero, one, and then two. Basically, on average, they're going to uh, essentially do nothing. They're going to buy back 1%. And they're going to buy back 2%. And lastly, the required rate of return. It's Chipotle. Uh, I get that they've, it, they've gone up massively. However, it's still a, just a Mexican restaurant, right? It's still just a Mexican restaurant. It's, it, you know, you, you can only reinvent that kind of food so many times, right? So I'm going to say, guys, just slightly beat the S&P 500 at around 12%. And um, yeah, this brings me down to $12.67, all the way up to $17.87. And then adjusting for debt, $11.22 to $16.20. The margin of safety of 5, 10, 15, $9.54 to $15.39. Now, full stop. All of those of you who are saying, this is wrong. This is this is not telling you guys that the stock price is going there. This is telling you what the, sh what the company should be worth, right? Let's make that distinction right now. Could it get there? Maybe you could have a Generac kind of scenario, right? For all those of you who do not know, Generac, $400 down to sub 80. I think, I think it was like sub 80 last year or something like that. You could have that kind of scenario, or you could just have the scenario where fundamentals just keep getting better and better and better. Stock price doesn't move and then it becomes in value again, right? So right now I see this as massively overvalued. And in fact, even the PE guys, if y'all remember that PE still very, very massive, 51.42. So yeah, I look at this and I'm like, I think the fundamentals are decent enough to wear that this kind of free cash flow does seem to work very, very well. Do you guys know it's kind of free cash flow doesn't work for all companies. It works for mainly well-established companies, which I would actually argue Chipotle is. So yeah, that's just my two cents, guys. Again, not financial advice. Every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. That's why these calculators are available for free. I give you guys the five-year one so that way you can make your own assessments for yourself because again not financial advice so all in all guys when it comes to chipotle i gotta say i do like the company it still needs to fall a lot more sad but it kind of is i really wish that that five percent would have meant a lot more but maybe to some of you it uh it is a buy right now let me know in the comment section below anyways guys that pretty much does it for this video make sure to subscribe comment it really does help with the algorithm on youtube that's what's rumble make sure to follow us on next fl investing and if you like join us on the discord the link is in the description below thank you guys so much for all the prayers that you guys have given me uh specifically this past week and um please do not stop because we still need all the prayers as possible we're still not out of the woods yet when it comes to the baby so yeah thank you guys so much for watching peace out and we'll see you all next time